in memory of fallen warriors who love the game as many around the world do. This is an attempt to protect the warriors of the sport without compromising the format of the sport of professional boxing. Boxing by many is considered the purest sport. Two men, four fists, one ring, one loser, and one winner. And considered by many the most appalling and brutal of all sports. Warriors seek approval of fight fans and a chance to make a living by enduring pain and trauma. Many times surviving a battle never to be the same as before. The boxing community of commissions and boxing organizations owe it to the boxers to be able to compete while minimizing injury. Attempts have been made in the past, reducing the amount of championship rounds that are fought, redesigning and changing the size of gloves used for bouts. But remember, boxing is a sport, and every time we redesign the format, we compromise the integrity, and the decline of spectators continues. Boxing is a skill of controlled and monitored violence. It's the duty and responsibility of commissions and organizations to control and monitor in order to minimize injury and even death. Closer monitoring can be done by using inspectors, an official that is already used in many states throughout the U.S. How many, hey, how many times have I warned you about the bucket? You want to fight, I'll give you one. Monitoring action in and around the ring, as well as in the dressing rooms. I think that I think that every every inspector with a commission that is going to work in a corner for the safety of the fighter should have some kind of medical training, to or can be an expert at what he's doing. The hybrid inspector should be trained for emergency medical situations and be well versed in the sport of boxing. He should recognize what a good legal hand wrap consists of, along with legal substances allowed in the ring. He should be well versed on the rules and regulations of his state, and foremost able to detect and recognize signs of health and life safety situations. The type of things I look for, one of the most important things is responsiveness. How quickly somebody responds, how appropriate they respond. You look at the uh, pupil dilatation, which Usually, if somebody has pupil irregularities, they're going to be out cold. Uh, sometimes that's more useful after somebody's knocked out and comes back, they're not quite with the program a little bit. But the big thing is how responsive they are, how quickly they respond and react to when you ask them to do something, uh, whether they can hold both arms up equally, you know, the strength's good. Um, and a lot of times, just a look in their eyes. Some of them are just a little glassed over and can't focus in. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, you know, people are a reaction, but more so in terms of where they can focus and direct themselves in a particular area that you ask them to do. The inspector's job starts prior to the bout at weigh-ins, making sure there is order, not only in the crowd, but also between the boxers' camps. The scale must be well calibrated and boxers ready to step onto the scale. Make sure the proper parties are allowed near the scale Inspectors should secure the area around the scale, allowing only the designated boxer, his representative, and a representative of the opposing camp onto the scale platform. In a pre-bout dressing room, an inspector should be knowledgeable about wrapping hands, what to protect, what is legal, and what is not. We just look to make sure the safety of the fighter himself, 
where his hand ain't going to get hurt, that he got enough tape on there, enough support on his wrist, enough protection for his knuckles, and we sign off on him. He should be knowledgeable regarding gloves. Has padding been tampered with? Is the glove formed right inside and out? And the inspector should know how to tie the laces and tape the gloves. Right before the bath, the gloves are handed to them. They put on the gloves. We make sure if they got the eyes of the laces, which is that little plastic part on top of the laces, that it's on the top side, not the bottom side. On the bottom side, you tend to throw hooks, and that's where you usually catch the knot. You know, you get in the eye or something like that. But you usually tape it down pretty good, and when we feel it, we make sure that it's not a lump sticking up underneath the tape, that it is pressed down. He also needs to know what belongs in the corner. What substances are used to stop the bleeding of a laceration? What is used to reduce swelling? Well, the cut sometimes can be severe, and, uh, but if you got a good cut, man, that can uh, stop the bleeding, which is more you, not, There's nothing you can do to the cut, but there's a lot of things you can do if you can stop the bleeding, keep the, bleeding, the blood from going through his eye. And if, the, and, the, and if the cut is too severe, stop it. The knowledge and the proper use of these are a must. Any misuse can result in serious injury to the boxer and can be recognized and stopped prior to seriously injuring the boxer. Because there's something that I use at adrenaline 1,000, Avertine, Thrumman sometimes, but um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's good to have the right, and I think that every inspector should check every corner for the right ingredients as far as cuts is concerned. In order to consult with or act upon a situation as rapidly as possible, an inspector should know exactly where the commission director, ringside physician, and medics are at all times. An inspector has a clear advantage over the rest of the ring officials. It's always the contestants, you know, the, the safety of the contestant. Uh, you look at his corner, whether they're doing everything right, uh, meaning right is, you know, not putting too much Vaseline. If the, boy, the kid or the contestant gets hurt, make sure they got the right stuff to work on them and try to put knowledge into these corner men that, you know, that, you know, it's okay to stop a fight. Example of a good corner cleaning up after his mess and keeping it all clean. There's nothing on the mat. Due to his proximity to the working corner, he can closely monitor the corner, enforcing unauthorized personnel or objects out of the corner, the ring and surrounding apron. His proximity to the corner not only gives the inspector a vantage point to monitor actions that can jeopardize the safety of the contestants, such as water or ice thrown in the corner. We make sure there's no ice brought up into the ring. They can bring rice, ice up to the ring, but it cannot go on top of the ring. It got to stay on the floor. You know, the reason for that is a twist of the ankle that might left uh, a piece of ice on the ground. But also gives him a chance to closely assess the safety of the boxers by recognizing signs of dehydration or altered levels of alertness, signifying signs of extreme exhaustion or eye and head injury. There's the bell. Robinson exhausted, staggers back to his corner with the help of his cornerman. The horrible heat has taken its toll on the ever-moving Ray Robinson. The doctor comes over to look at Ray. It's hard to see how he can continue. Assisting the referees or judges is not out of the question by responding to a situation that can get out of control without fast action. Post-bout monitoring of the boxer after a hard fight or especially after a stoppage due to head blows is crucial. Deputy uh, supervisor or whoever's the inspector that day will assign somebody or somebody's always there to direct them to the doctor where the doctor can give them their post-fight physical make sure they're okay. Many boxers don't show signs or symptoms of injury until after the bout. That's when the body's adrenaline starts losing its effect. Now is the perfect time to assess for injuries to the boxer's body. 
such as the hands, shoulders, face, and head, or any other injuries that the doctors or ringside medics should be notified about. And here it is, Carnero launching a terrific left. Sheriff is down. He's in utter collapse. The mob howls for the kill. They've come for a Roman holiday, and they've not been cheated. Little do they know that Ernie Schaff has fought his last fight, that he'll be carried from the ring to die. And as Primo's great arm is lifted in the traditional symbol of victory, a game little guy makes his final exit from the world of Fistian. Let's make boxing safer without compromising the format. We owe it to the most important factors of the sport, the fans and the warriors who fight to please them. Thank you. 